guess that clock says seven o'clock, so we'll go by that clock. Alrighty. We'll call this meeting to order. Let everyone know the board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant the relief from it where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use variance requests require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use variance requests require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant the variances. Please note that any order of the board, oh, please note that any order of the board, can you guys hear me? No. no. no it's on. <laughs> all right, I might have to say this all over. Testing, we, still not on? This one's on. This one's, can you hear me now? Yeah. There we go. All right, I will restart. All right. Uh, we'll call this meeting order. Uh, the board does not write the zoning ordinance, but does have the authority to grant relief from it where practical difficulty or unnecessary hardship would result. The board will vote on each agenda item following a public hearing. Use variance requests require a minimum of six affirmative votes in order to grant the requested variances. Non-use variance requests require a minimum of five affirmative votes in order to grant the variances. Please note that any order of the board is valid for a period of one year. That's granting or denying a variance. If you would like to request that the board table or adjourn your case due to the absence of a full board, which th today we have everybody, you must inform the chairperson immediately after the public hearing. Petitioners shall do their best to limit presentations at 10 minutes. Each participant in a public hearing shall do their best to limit comments to three minutes. All righty, so everyone's here. Uh, is there any amendments to the minutes from September 14th, 2023? Does anyone have any amendments? Revisions. All right, seeing none, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Mr. Reddy. Mr. Reddy, second? Mr. Gavin. All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. On to unfinished business, case number 23-09-17, whenever you are ready. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, the subject property is located on the west side of Etowah Avenue within the one-family residential zoning district, and the property contains a single-family dwelling with two detached accessory structures. Uh, since last month's meeting when this item was postponed, uh, the petitioner has provided a set of modified plans for you all to review. Uh, looking at those plans, uh, the petitioner is still proposing to demolish the existing non-conforming enclosed front porch and extend their living space on the first floor with the unenclosed front porch and steps integrated into the corner of the house. And the petitioner is still also proposing the full uh, second story addition. The first floor modifications still result in a non-conforming 16.75 east front yard setback. And the second floor, when I, just a second. And the second floor has been recessed from the front plane of the first floor by approximately six feet, but that also results in a non-conforming 22.75 foot setback. So the petitioner is still seeking the same variance, first to alter slash expand the non-conforming structure in a non-conforming manner, and a second variance to still waive 8.25 feet from the minimum required 25 foot east front yard setback. Uh, one thing I would point out is that even though the second floor was recessed, a variance is still necessary to waive 2.25 feet from the minimum required 25 foot east front yard setback measure to that, that uh, second floor. And like I said earlier, the petitioner is still proposing the new covered unenclosed front porch and steps at the southeast corner of the property. And provisions in the zoning ordinance, as you may know, uh, does state that unenclosed porches and steps may extend uh, no more than seven feet into the minimum required 25 foot front yard setback. Uh, but this proposed porch still uh, extends the 9.4 feet, the same as last month. So they're still seeking the same third variance to waive 2.4 feet from the maximum permitted seven foot extension that the covered unenclosed front porch and steps are allowed to encroach into the minimum required front yard setback. So to summarize, the modifications to the site plan do not change the need or the size of the variance for the first floor modifications. As for the second floor modifications, it still requires variance A and variance B in a reduced manner. 
So again, I would encourage the board to consider the non-use variance criteria as you proceed with this item. And if the board does choose to grant the variances, uh, staff did go ahead and provide you a motion for your consideration. Uh, again, if you, if you do choose to grant the variances as shown. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Yes. Did I, did I hear you say that the porch was being demolished? So I, I thought last time I remember that they were using the porch. And, and yes, so they're, they're maintaining the same footprint of the porch, um, but they are utilizing that same footprint for the uh, new living space. So you can see on the floor plans, they show it having the, that space being utilized for the half bath, the foyer, as well as the porch, the new unenclosed covered porch itself. Oh, okay. Yep. I understand. Thanks. Any other questions? Yes? Um, so really what would the change is that the front, the second story has been pushed back. Is that okay? Yes, that's correct. Any other questions for staff? All right, seeing none, the pit sister may come forward. Um, Good evening. I'm John Berger, the architect for Tim Campbell and Sue. We took the board's advice with the revisions. The, I'm not sure the confusion on the porch. We're planning on keeping the porch and just re redoing it. And so with the modification of pushing that second floor back, it still looks like the porch in a way that was already already there and has been there forever for the house. And then uh, we still have, you know, it made sense to go back to where the existing wall is between the porch and the, and the living space to take the second floor up just from a structural build, structure standpoint and, and buildability of the house. So yes, we still are a couple feet into the front yard setback at the second story, but it's certainly a lot different than where we were at before where everything was pulled up to the front of the street. So we've, we pushed everything back and now we see they've made a, major impact on the house by adding the, the rear space to the house to pick up the space they lost in the front. So that's what we came up with. Do we have any questions for the position? Yes, that's right. How, 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 what was the square footage on the old plan and what's the square footage of the new plan? I don't think I'm on, I'm sorry. It's almost, it's just over a little, I don't remember the exact square footage, but it's, it's just over a little bit over double the, the size of the house because of the second floor addition that we're I mean, well, the old, between, by pushing what you had on the original plan, and now you push the back of the second floor, you push that back, yep. it's bigger now, the second floor is bigger. Yeah, because we had to pick up that six feet or so that we lost in the front of the right. house, and I think we added 12 feet in the back of the house, so it's basically six by whatever the width of the house is, 25 24. feet wide bigger. Okay. So it's about 150 square feet bigger okay. than we had last, Thank you. last month. Um, you may have addressed this last time, but are you utilizing the same foundation that's there even though mm -hmm. you're demolishing the house? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was just wondering yeah. how that footprint was staying that way, so that makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, seeing none, thank you. We'll reopen public comments. Is there anyone here to comment on this case? Going once, twice, three times. Okay, we'll close public comment. Bring it back to this side of the board and see if there's any motions or discussion. Anyone? Mr. Clapp. I'll make a motion to approve. Uh, what would that motion to approve be? To a to approve all the variances requested, so that would be. Would that be to go with what the staff had moved for the motion, the on the first page there? Yes. Okay. Yes. Is there a second to that, Mr. Moore? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so that motion would be moved at the appeal of Susan Joe Petitioner Owner for the variances A, alter and expand non-conforming structure. B, waive 8.25 feet of minimum required 25 feet east. Front yard setback measured to the first floor and wave 2.25 feet of the minimum required 25 feet east. Front yard setback measured to the second floor. Wave 2.4, the maximum allowable seven feet extension of covered unenclosed front porch and steps into the minimum required front yard setback to permit construction of the first and second story additions of a new covered unenclosed front porch and steps to an existing non-conforming single family dwelling at 1116 Etowah Avenue be granted. 
Thank that's you what that. Steph had. No problem. <laughs> now, Mr. Clant. Uh, comments on this? No, I was just going to say I appreciate the applicant listened to some of the, the suggestions we offered last month. I think the biggest issue we had was that that second floor did cover that porch and made that, that uh, nonconformance a bit greater. So I appreciate what you guys did. I think it looks great. And uh, therefore, I suggested the recommendation. Mr. Moore. Nothing further. Ms. Robinson. Just looking at the non-use variances, A, um, that the chapter's restrictions unreasonably prevent the homeowner from using the property for permitted purposes. Because they're not really building a new house, they're kind of doing a rebuild or, or a remodel and using that same parameter of the foundation, which was in the 700 square foot amount. It's just such an old house. I'm glad to see that they're still using that. But that size of the house is just obsolete in today's world, 100 years old or more. Um, it, it makes sense to me that the chapter's restrictions do unnecessarily prevent the owner from, from doing that. Uh, B, that the variance would do a substantial justice to the applicant, as well as the other property owners. Just, again, improving the property there. Again, that makes that uh, variance part B true. And the plight of the homeowners due to unique circumstances. The house is over 100 years old. That's the, the sub, uh, unique circumstances. And the alleged hardship was not created by any person. Again, it's because of the original house. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else to add? Any other discussion? All right. I, too, agree with uh, everything that's been stated and uh, think that they've done well coming listening to our comments and meeting with what uh, I think the best way to work with the practical difficulties of their existing home and circumstance. So I, too, will be in favor of this. All right, seeing no other comments, we'll move to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hands. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Congratulations. You. Best luck. So You're welcome. Okay, next we move on to new business. Case number 23-10-18 for 504 Detroit Avenue. Whenever you are ready with that. Thank you. Uh, the subject property is located on the south side of Detroit Avenue, east of Rochester Road in the one-family residential zoning district. And the property is approximately 54 and a half feet in width, 230 feet in depth, and contains a lot area of over 12 and a half thousand square feet. And the property currently contains an existing single-family house, which does also contain second-level attic space, and there's also a detached accessory structure in the rear yard. The petitioner is proposing to construct a dormer addition within the house's existing attic space at the southeast corner of the dwelling, which will create new second level living area. Uh, looking at the, their survey provided, uh, the proposed second level addition is going to be retaining the same footprint as the existing single family dwelling. So the overall footprint of the house is not changing. However, the existing dwelling currently maintains a non-conforming three foot east side yard setback where a minimum five foot setback is required. And the proposed dormer addition is going to be in line with the first floor exterior walls. So the dormer is also going to be retaining that same non-conforming setback. So the petitioners first seeking a variance to alter slash expand the, a non-conforming structure in a non-conforming manner. And then with that, they're also seeking a second variance to waive two feet from the minimum required five foot east side yard setback. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, we'll move to the petitioner. Please come forward and present your case. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ryan Quigley. I'm here with my wife, Elisa Quigley. Uh, we're the owners of 504 Detroit Avenue. Um, as mentioned, we're looking for uh, some variance approvals to add a dormer to our house. Uh, we don't currently have access to our attic. Um, our house is built in 1915. Uh, it doesn't currently meet the building code. Uh, so we're looking for the variance to take our two bedroom, two bathroom house this will allow us access to the upstairs where we can actually add an extra two bedrooms and one bathroom. Uh, my wife and I are looking, we moved to Royal Oak in 2020 and we're looking to stay here, uh, but our current house doesn't really offer us much to grow a family. Um, so we are proposing to build our dormer off the existing footprint of the house. 
we did talk to our neighbors on both sides. They're both okay with it. We discussed it with our neighbors across the street as well. Um, they're okay with it as well. Um, we did get sign-offs for our two neighbors on both sides. Uh, the one across the street, we just recently talked to them, so I don't have a sign-off from them. Um, we did look at other options with our architect, um, just based on where the staircase for the basement currently sits on the house. They recommended to just run it, run the staircase up above it, um, just to make the house flow a little bit better. Uh, the other option was to take one of the existing bedrooms and just build the staircase in it. Uh, but that then reduces the ability to have more bedrooms in the house. Any questions for the position? No? All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. We'll open up for public comment. Is there anyone here to speak on this case one way or another? All right, seeing none, we'll close once, twice, three times. All right, we'll close public comments. Bring it back to this side of the board. Is there any discussion and or motions? Mr. Gavin. I move to approve the variances as requested. Is there a second? Mr. Platt. Okay, Mr. Gavin. And it's really straightforward. I, you know, I, I could go through all the items on it, but it's, it's a dormer. Uh, they're staying within the footprint they already have. They're just expanding the size of their house. I, I view that as a very minimal thing, and their neighbors are in support. So I'm, I'm very much in favor of this. Mr. Clark? No, it's an existing non-conforming condition they didn't create. And it's, there's practical difficulty due to the structure. When you have to inset that dormer a bit or off the bearing wall, it creates a challenge. So I think it's a nice design. It's well concealed, tucked away. So great job. Thank you. Any other one like to miss? Well, I'll just uh, repeat the same things from the last um, that we did on the non-use variances that the house was built so long ago that the size of the house um, restricts you. So you're making at least more livable in today's world that the chapter's restrictions don't unreasonably prevent the owner from using the property. Or that, that's a true statement. Um, number B, it's true that the variance will do substantial to the house. It'll fit more with today's world and in the neighborhood as far as the size of the house that the plight of the homeowner is due to the unique circumstances. Again, it looks like a brand new house, but it's obviously when you look back at it, it's, you know, originally has been there for a long time and that the alleged hardship um, was not created by any person um, that has an interest in the property. So all those statements are true. Anyone else comments? Yes, no, yes, no. Again, uh, I also agree with everything that's been stated and Again, Ms. Robinson stated it very well as to how its practical difficulties are against this case of, hey, you're just wanting to make a, a house more livable and you're not going up beyond the outline. So uh, I have no problem with that. All right, seeing no other discussion, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Congratulations. Best luck to you. Uh, we'll move on to case number 23-10-19 at 5061 Delamere Avenue, whenever you are ready. Thank you. Uh, the subject site's located at the southwest corner of the intersection of Delamere Avenue and Torque Avenue in the General Industrial Zoning District. And the property is currently developed with a 6,000 plus square foot industrial building which is currently being utilized by a stone countertop contractor. Uh, at their September 12, 2023 meeting, the Royal Oak Planning Commission unanimously granted site plan and special land use approval to allow the petitioner to construct a 6,757 square foot warehouse addition onto the rear of the existing building with the contingency that the petitioner obtained listed variance. Now the zoning ordinance does require that contractors establishment provide one parking space for every 400 square feet of usable floor area and based on the approved plans, this, uh, this portion of the site contains 5,573 square feet which works to 14 required off street parking spaces and then warehouses require one parking space for every 1,000 square feet of usable floor area. And the proposed warehouse addition is 6,757 square feet. So that would require seven additional off-street parking spaces. So together combined, the site would require at least 21 off-street parking spaces, 
Well, the site contains 16, so the petitioner is seeking a variance to waive five of the minimum required 21 off-street parking spaces. Thank you. Any questions for staff? All right, seeing none, if the petitioner is present, you may come forward and present your case. Hello. Hello, my name is Najim Alos. I'm the owner of 5061 Delamere Avenue. So I am into the marble and granite countertop business and we're realizing a space, extra space for pretty much storage, holding more material to hold more colors. It's all about like colors. The more colors you hold, the more customers pretty much you visit your yard. And we do have a shop right now down the street. So we're just moving down a few buildings. And pretty much I'm having only two employees. So that's about it. Everything there is going to be material, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Any questions? Yes, Ms. Rose. I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't um, I, how many employees do you have? Two. Two. Yeah. Is this like where the warehouse is, where you go inside and you go through all the slabs of granite? Yeah, we have all the samples in the showroom, and we have the full slabs in the back. We so hold them. So you pick out your own slab. So yeah. The, uh, the uh, customer would come in and go through the slabs and or see where. Or would the contractor would come in to say would it fit on this? Well, usually we have samples in the showroom, and we do have the full slabs. It depends. Yes, kind of yes. When they come into the showroom, we do have all the samples so there to look at and stuff. A customer could go in the back and pick their slab individually. Yes. Okay. Yes. So maybe four cars. I mean, why do we? Um. Yeah, maybe four cars. I mean, what do you mean, four cars? Well, you, this, the, the, the ordinance says we need to have 21, but, you, but the design, what I'm looking at, says yes. you have 16. But I'm yes. looking at how many cars are going to be there. Oh, how many cars are going to be there? Yeah, it's going to be about, like, maybe, yeah, yeah, like okay. four or five. Okay. The most. Okay. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Couldn't understand you. I didn't quite understand sure how it was going to work. Yeah. Okay. Well, we don't really... So with this business, it's usually I take the same sort of customer. If they do have to uh, pick their own slab, then they make a set up an appointment. Sure. And by appointments, we know how many people are coming to the shop. So, and I'm um, usually they're not, when we, we're not swamped where we have like five, six customers at a time because we control the appointments to see what time they come in. Because somebody has to walk with them to the back to show them so they can just wander out, you know, go by themselves. Thank you. So, no, no problem. Thank you. Any other uh, questions for the petitioner? <clears throat> All right, seeing none, we'll, uh, thank you. We'll open up. I have oh, you do? I yes. do, I'm sorry. Yes. So the no. other thing I was just looking at, like, yes. the, where the design is and the, the parking are on an angle, and then there's, like, purple area looks like maybe it's going to be landscaping or something in between the parking spots. Um, Am I looking at that right? That might be the handicap spot there. Well, I counted. I counted them all, and I could see like you've got you've got a big spot and you've got you've got where the hash marks are where there's and everybody's on an angle. Like right now, it looks like there was parking that was like straight in. Oh, that says catch basin, so that's probably why you can't. Okay, you can't tell what that Yeah, was. you wouldn't be okay, able to sorry. park on top of a catch basin. It might be angled because. I think when it's 90 degree parking, you need a 20 foot aisle oh, width, gosh. and they can't okay. get that. Yeah. So I think they angled it where it's narrower there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a dock door, 90 degree parking. I'm yeah. sorry, I had a lot of questions. <laughs> no, go on, go on. Um, and then on the what would be the south side of the building, like right now, it's like I got an old wood fence around it, yeah. and that's going to be gone because yeah. that's where the new part's going to be. And then there's going to be a couple parking spaces on that end, am I right? Yes. Okay. Um, and then, so and all that's going to be gone. Okay, so the people will be able to come in and then pull yes. into that parking. Okay. I don't, okay. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. I got it. Actually, I got it. Yeah. One, two. Yes. Sorry. Uh, do you know if you could park on Delamere there? I, I don't really. Um, know by us? Yeah. Um, I don't think so, no. Okay. I mean, no. no. I just, I was looking at Google Maps. So and see well, where I'm at right now, you can. Okay. But I think like a couple of feet down of me, you can. Okay. But where I'm at exactly, no. Okay. Because it's that turn right there, that's yeah. why. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Just wondering. Mr. Clay. Um, how, do you, how do you handle, I assume that the uh, fabricators or installers come to pick up 
then deliver yeah. it to the job site. How is that addressed here? I know we're not really getting into loading or anything like that, but is that, does that block any of the parking at times because no, it is so, so narrow? No, that's why the we're adding the, they're going to pull right inside. Okay, so, so that's a curb. garage right there where the entrance is. So right there. And yeah, they got that curb cut yeah, right there. Yeah, right so there. they pull okay. right in there and then Perfect. we load them up and they leave. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Any other questions for the petitioner? Since I was a little jumpy before. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Don't worry, Nancy. I have no problem with as many questions as you want. All right. No questions? One, two, three. All right. Now we'll try for public comment. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Uh, anyone here to speak uh, for or against this for public comment may come forward. All right. Going once, twice, three times. All right. We'll bring it back to this side of the board. Any discussion and or motions? Mr. Clapp. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? Mr. Gavin. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Clapp. Well, we all know that the ordinance requires a certain amount of parking spaces, but I believe the applicant proved that he doesn't need that many for, for his business. So looks like there is a suitable amount of parking spaces here. It doesn't interrupt the loading activities on the site. So therefore, I have no issues with this. Mr. Gavin. I have nothing further. All right, any other comments? I can walk through the, sure, go ahead. the non use variances. <laughs> that the chapter's restrictions unusually prevent him from using it for a permitted purpose. Again, that was why I wanted to know how, like, how many people were going to be there. So it sounds like it's going to totally fit his business. Um, the variance would do substantial justice to the applicant. Um, he, he's working this more as a showroom and a, and a warehouse, basically, is what's happening here. So it's going to help him. If that's, it's true that this. Variants will help him do his business there. And the plight of the home or the landowners due to unique circumstances of the property. Uh, the property is kind of an odd shape because it's kind of stuck in that little quadrant or crescent there. And so I can see why it would be difficult to put other parking places in there. And that the alleged hardship has not been created because of the shape of the property. It really is on the property, not on the person. So all those statements are true. Any other comments? Once, twice. I also am in favor of this. I think it's a unique circumstance in that the business is dealing with very large format stone that takes up a lot of space, and it's different than other warehouses where you might have a whole bunch of things and have more staff that needs to be held. In this case, you can't really <laughs> have more staff with that much stone in there. Well, you can, but uh, they really use the fork trucks to move the stuff around so it you're not going to be changing a whole lot in the way of staff you're just putting more stuff right there so because of that i don't have a problem uh so if there's no more discussion we'll move to vote all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed all right motion carries unanimously good luck sir you. welcome and we will Round off the night with case number 23-10-20, 304 Lexington Boulevard, whenever you are ready. Yes. Uh, the subject site's located on the north side of Lexington Boulevard within the one-family large lot zoning district. And the property is 100 feet in width and contains a lot area of over 25,000 square feet. And the property contains an existing single-family dwelling with an attached garage slash accessory building. Uh, the petitioner is proposing to demolish all structures on site and construct a new two-story single-family dwelling with two separate entry garages slash accessory buildings, which are referred to in the plans as one-car garage A and two-car garage B. Uh, the zoning ordinance does, of course, state that no single family dwelling can exceed 3,500 square feet of usable floor area. And according to staff's calculations, the proposed first floor contains 1,992 square feet of usable floor area. And the second floor contains approximately 2,082 square feet of usable floor area. So combined, the proposed house is going to contain 4,074 square feet of usable floor area. So the petitioner is seeking a variance to weigh 574 square feet from the maximum allowable usable floor area of 3,500 square feet. And of course, the zoning ordinance also states that 
Uh, the ground floor area of all accessory buildings cannot exceed 10% of the lot area or exceed 800 square feet. Uh, the proposed one car garage A contains 289 square feet and the proposed two car garage B would contain 726. So the total combined accessory ground floor area works out to 1,015 square feet. So the petitioner is seeking a second variance to waive 215 square feet from the maximum allowable 800 square feet for an accessory building. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for staff? Um, yes. Go ahead, Ms. Grant. What percent lot covers the houses? So the house itself would be 14 percent, and that also includes the garages. If you just looked at the accessory lot coverage on its own, it would be 4 percent. So the house would be 10%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other questions for staff? Yeah. All right, seeing none, uh, the petitioner present may come forward and state your case. Hello. Hello. Uh, thanks for having me back. Um, I was here uh, back in August. Uh, I took everybody's uh, comments, recommendations from that meeting. Uh, you know. We asked at that time, if there's maybe any changes, you know, you become very married to the plan. And, uh, and we took the feedback and uh, went back to the drawing board and found that, you know, what we're trying to do was feasible. And uh, we brought down some reduction. So originally, uh, we were asking for 983 square feet over the variance. Uh, we also had a 1.4 height variance we were requesting. And 480 square, 485 square feet of a garage uh, relief we were requesting. So now we've reduced that to 575 square feet variance over the 3,500. It was a 41% reduction from what we originally came from and 215 square feet for the garage, which is a 55% reduction of the garage space. Um, and I calculated out the lot coverage would be just 12%, uh, the footprint of the house would be just 12% of the actual lot, you know, the large lot district. Um, you know, we were here beginning, I think I heard comments that the plan was really nice, and uh, so we wanted to bring that really nice plan back to you uh, just to, for consideration. Um, you know, Lexington is in what we, everybody considers the large lot district. Uh, Lexington is a one-way, very narrow street um, with limited or restricted parking at night. You can't park on the street at night. So, you know, I have three kids. And uh, you know, we're looking for a larger garage for you know cars because we can't park on the street. It's important to note the existing house well is over 80 years old. There was nothing salvageable about the house. The basement was five feet. It was leaking. There was no <laughs> underneath the plastic siding. There was no like waterproof protection. It was just basically plastic siding right over the sheathing. So nothing was to code, nothing was to complain. There was really nothing to work with. So therefore, we started with a new plan. Last meeting, you had asked if I did any research. I think I brought tonight, there's some you know, precedent that there's been many of these cases on uh, Mount Vernon and Lexington that the, uh, the variances uh, or relief were, were are granted. Uh, so it's kind of important to note that I did go out to the neighbors, um, I went to the neighbors to the east to the west. They both agreed. And uh, unfortunately, uh, Lane to the one side of me could not make it. She had, uh, she became very sick about 20 minutes before the meeting. I'd asked if she, you know, I didn't have time to, to get a letter, but I have another neighbor that is going to hopefully speak in favor of me. So it's important to note back in April of, uh, 2023, 325 Lexington. There was a variance of 860 square feet. Sorry, getting dry. January 2023, 4135 Sheffield. There was a uh, relief for 760 square feet over the maximum 3,500 square feet. And so there was, you know, there's probably six. I could probably go through all of them. But there is precedence of this. I looked on, I did some market research 
Within the last year, there was 97 houses sold over 3,500 square feet. Right now in the market, there's only seven. So that are th over 3,500 square feet. So there, there are houses in Royal Oak that are, you know, meet these, these, you know, these variances that are over the, what I'm looking for. And I also made a copy of those if you guys want to look at it tonight. But you know, there is, there is instances like this. You know, this is not a new thing for uh, Royal Oak. And I think that you know, with your comments and what we bring in tonight, that is, um, you know, we, we take in consideration what you've said before. Is there any questions for the petitioner? Mr. Gannon. Um, I just want to thank you for taking the time to resign. I, I unfortunately wasn't here for the last meeting, so I uh, wasn't here to see the uh, motion for reconsideration, but uh, um, I was in favor of your proposal last time, and I'm glad you took the rest of the board's thoughts into consideration. So thank you. Any other? I, can, I can go over to some of these other ones that, you know, April 21, 1305 Vincetta, there was a, 739 square feet waved over the 800 square feet accessory garage, 18, 1805 Greenleaf, 680 square feet over the 800 square feet garage. In addition, there was 1,100 square feet relief granted over the 3,500 square feet allowable. 1904 Cedar Hill, there was 960 square feet allowed over the 3,500 square feet. 202 Crane, 956 square feet waved over the 3,500. So these are all within the last you know year and a half. I mean, these are all, you know, th there is precedence of, of this type of home on a large lot. Any other, any questions for the petitioner? All right. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, just one question. I just wanted to verify. I believe you mentioned last month that you, or the month before, that you have three children, correct? Correct. So four bedroom house, three children plus the master. It's not a, it's, you do it, so you need the, the bedrooms for the family, for the three kids plus your master suite. Yeah, all, all three kids are all in rural schools, elementary, middle school, and high school here. Okay. So, yes. Thank you. And, you know, at, at some point they're all going to be driving, uh, all having cars. Um, you know, I, 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 I do want to have a house that is prepared for a modern family. Any other questions? Once, twice. Twice and a half. All right, three times. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, we'll open up public hearing. Is there anyone to speak for or against this case? You may come forward this time. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jason Hans. Uh, I live to the east of Michael um, at 224 Lexington Boulevard. Um, I would like to basically provide my uh, support for his uh, decision here in coming to appeal for this variance here. Um, he's been nothing but courteous and great throughout the whole process so far, um, reaching out to provide his contact info if I ever need anything, if anything's going wrong um, with all the current uh, construction that's kind of going on. Um, but yeah, we, my wife and I, she wasn't able to be here tonight, but we do provide our uh, support in his cause. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak on this? Going once, going twice. All right, three times. We'll bring it to the side of the board. Is there any motions and or discussion? <coughs> Don't all jump at once. <laughs> yeah, oh, Mr. Moore, I think I saw your hand. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say that, you know, the, the issues I had last time, uh, this was here in August, I. I think they've been addressed, um, you know, on each of the variances, they've almost cut in half what they were asking. So, um, you know, I, I think that's a, a great improvement. And again, somebody taking some of our feedback and coming back with a um, better plan. So just a comment. Mr. Okay. Now, I think, I think the one thing to consider here too is the four bedrooms. And we design a significant amount of homes in Royal Oak and other areas, and usually 3,500 is about the right size for three bedrooms. When you look at that, I did the math, some quick math on that additional bedroom suite, that's 
when you factor the room, the, you know, the closet, and the circulation to get to that room, it's about 300 square feet. So I know it's a little, little shy of the 500 they're requesting, but that bed, that fourth bedroom, really does require that extra square footage. So, you know, to me, it's a, a bit more reasonable based on that fact. Mr. Gavin, I think I saw your hand up. Yeah, I was going to move approval of the variances as requested. Okay. Is there a second? Mr. Moore, seconds. Go ahead, Mr. Gavin. Um, I think this is one of those cases, I can't, and maybe this was a question I should have asked staff, I don't recall that this is technically the large lot district, although it is a quite large lot. Um, and this is just, it's one of those times where uh, with the larger lots um, that 3,500 square feet can be quite restrictive, especially when, as noted, uh, with with the the size as uh, requested, it's only 10% of the uh, uh, area of the lot uh, for coverage. So, uh, for that reason, I think uh, the chapter's restrictions uh, unreasonably present prevent the uh, the owner from using it for what would be a permitted purpose. Um, it does substantial justice to the applicant as well as uh, neighboring property owners. We heard testimony from one. I know there's a, a, a letter uh, opposing, uh, well, two letters technically, from, but from the same person. Um, but I feel like there, there's substantial justice there. Um, the, uh, the plight of the landowners due to unique circumstances of the property, that's the size of the property, and uh, the alleged hardship is is the size of the property really, and, and the, 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 the zoning ordinance uh, ordinances limitations for those larger lots. So uh, he did not create those circumstances. So I'm for that reason I'm I'm in favor of this. Okay. Mr. Moore, nothing else to add. Okay. Thanks. And anyone else want to speak? Mr. Reddy. Um, I think Mr. Gavin's arguments are reasonable, but I am opposed. Um, I think. Um, you mentioned uh, several other properties, and well, the the decisions we make shouldn't set precedent. I don't believe the zoning is for 3,500 square feet um, for a lot this size, and a lot of times we factor in existing uh, buildings, uh, present difficulties, and so forth. But this is a new build, so I don't see where the uniqueness comes into play. So that's why I'm opposed. Any other comments? Mr. Robinson? I'll be in favor. Um, one of the things we kind of looked at from two months ago um, was the size of the house um, as it compares to the neighborhood and the size of the large lot. Is it a large lot? The yes, the property. Okay. Yes. And we kind of talked about the size of it. One of the things I kind of looked up to say, right now there are... One, two, three, four, five, six houses in the Arlington um, legal description, just um, Lexington and Mount Vernon. There are six houses that are over and above that 35 square foot already. And like you had mentioned too, that it was, that's not a huge house anymore in today's world. It just it isn't that big anymore. So that it reinforced, reinforced my feeling on the house. Mm -hmm. Additional comments? Mm -hmm. Let's trace. Mm -hmm. Well, I will be in favor of this motion. Um, I agree, precedence does not take case, but this is a large lot, and the 3,500 square feet is set up for the minimum lot size, which is 6,000, which is half, at least half this size of this lot. And there, uh, although I have a problem when stuff starts to go over 4,000 feet. And I might have been a heartburn ahead. I've been here with the four car garage. Being three car garage is all right for a larger home. And that sort of is what's pushing it over that 4,000 square feet, in my opinion. Um, so as Mr. Gavin's pointed out, the size of the lot, is, in my opinion, is what's hindering it. And comparing it to its neighborhood, it's not out of place. So I don't think it's an extravagant McMansion that we have to worry about. Uh, so because of that, I have no problem with uh, going ahead with variances as requested. If there's no other discussion, I move to vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye and raise your hands. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. One against. Congratulations. Your motion passes. Your variances are granted. Best of luck to you. Thank you.
All right, other business. Meeting schedule and religious holidays for 2024. Yes. So as you all may know, each year every board is required to set their meeting dates with considerations given to potential conflicts with religious holidays. Uh, so staff went ahead and prepared a draft schedule of meeting dates for the year 2024, which follows the standard second Thursday of each month uh, with potential holiday conflicts identified. So if the board is comfortable with the meeting schedule as shown, uh, there is a recommended motion provided. Uh, but on the flip side, if the board wants to discuss alternative meeting dates, uh, that, that's also an option as well. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone have any discussion in your motions? Anyone have a problem with any of the dates? No? Okay, no one has a problem with the dates. Has someone got a motion for them then? Mr. Gavin. Oh, Mr. Reddy, I saw too. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll let you take it. <laughs> I approve the dates. <laughs> and second by Mr. Gavin. Any uh, discussion? No. Yeah. No? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. <clears throat> that motion carries. On to any other business, or is that was it? That's it. Okay. On to general public comment. Please come forward. We have a person who's state. Very patient. Man. Okay, I uh, should be quick. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Matthew Switlick. I live at 515 Lloyd Avenue, and I'm looking to clarify um, specifically Chapter 633 on solid waste, refuse receptacle storage. Um, section F refers to rubbish receptacle storage shall be located within the rear yard setback. I have a neighbor uh, adjacent to my property. They're actually on Marywood. They are 21, uh, 2117 Marywood Drive. Uh, it's a series of condos, and they have started putting all of their garbage cans in the corner of the property adjacent to the property line. They basically took um, the brick paving stones that are about a foot by foot, plopped them down with cement in the corner, and took out all the grass. And ever since they've done this, I get a lot more runoff and flooding in my my backyard than I used to. Um, and so I'm just looking to get clarification on if where they are storing the trash receptacles is okay. I know in most municipalities that I've ever dealt with, especially college towns like East Lansing, they specifically say a trash receptacle needs to be against a structure or specifically not against a shared property line. And so I was just interested in getting a, a answer from the zoning board on this. I have an answer or they may right be able to, to direct you to the right person. Sure. Well, this board's, um, their, their responsibility is to, you know, hear variance requests or administrative appeals as it pertains to the zoning ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like, you know, the, the questions that you have are pertaining to something outside the scope of the zoning ordinance. Um, it sounds more like it could be a potential code enforcement violation. Um, that wouldn't necessarily be something covered by this board. Uh, but if you'd like, I can I can provide you the contact information for code enforcement. So you guys aren't the ones who define like chapter 633 and that kind of thing. You guys just enforce the rules. Okay. Um, I would love to get any reference. I've had I've been chasing this for several months and I've been having a hard time finding yes. the right person to talk to. And a lot of emails have gone unanswered. Okay. So um, if, yes, if I can get that contact information, I would love that. Thank you very okay. much. Not okay. a problem. Yeah. All right. Is there any other public comment? Any ghosts or ghouls since it is Halloween? <laughs> no ghosts or ghouls? All right. Uh, in which case, then, uh, do we have the mystery motion to eerily make this meeting end? Mr. Reddy. I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those against, say boo. <laughs> All right. Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned. <clears throat>